Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of The Chef You and I. Today is Polish Day. Yes, as you know, I made Easter bread during the Easter time period. And I decided that since we are in fall, why not make some of the recipes that my grandmother made and I absolutely loved. She made wonderful potato salad, Polish potato salad, a borscht soup, very simple. And also we're going to be making a Polish plum cake. I'm really excited about that. But last month or last week, we did another show. And that was that I was going to do a roasted pristine grape and olive prosciutto, but we didn't have time. So that's what we're starting with today. I'm very excited about that. And we have all the ingredients. It's really simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you what the ingredients are, and then we're going to assemble it, and we're going to put it in the oven because it has to bake for 35 to 40 minutes, believe it or not. So the actual ingredients are two cups of pristine grapes, which I have right here, um, two cups of pitted olives. We have two different kinds of olives, uh, one half a teaspoon of kosher salt, um, actually, one and a half teaspoons of fresh thyme leaves, which are right here. Um, and also a fourth of a cup of basil leaves, which I am going to chop up a little bit more for you. And then we, we have 10.5 ounces of soft goat cheese. And we're going to have 10 slices of baguette so that you can have that. So the first thing we need to do, actually, is we need to combine and stir our grapes and we're going to add a little bit of olive oil, but I always like to use a little bit of duck fat, gourmet duck fat spray, just to make sure. So then what we need to do is actually find and stir our grapes, olive, salt, thyme, and a fourth of a cup of olive oil in a median baking dish. So here we go. There's the olives. There's the thyme. And we want the olive oil. So there's a quarter of a cup of olive oil here, right? And then we actually add um, the olives in. So that's two cups of olives. So what's going to happen is, uh, and we're going to stir that. Uh, what's going to happen is uh, they, we have to add the basil leaves in, I think, too. Oh, no, we don't use the basil leaves right now. We do that later. So I've already, so that's, see how simple that is? Okay, so that, we've already preheated a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven, and we are going to put it on the level of the middle. So we've got it down there. So we're going to actually put this in the oven, and we're going to set the timer for 30 to 45 minutes. I'm going to do 40, so we're going to set the timer for about 35 to 37, 38 minutes. And here's the thing with this. You have to wait and the grapes are gonna get almost like they're gonna, they're gonna prune up a little bit. They're gonna get wrinkly and that's what you want. So the next thing we do with this wonderful recipe is we're going to make the spread that's going to go on our uh, baked, bread, but we're going to put the bread in for a few minutes right before we take the other things out. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make this wonderful spread, you know, that you're going to put on it. So let's do this. Um, we're going to add, we've got all of the bread, so we're going to put this on a baking dish, right? Because you have to get it hard, -er, right? So let me come over here and do this. We've got 10 pieces here. Great. So 
Then what we're doing is we're gonna take our, I have a quarter of a cup of basil here, which I really love fresh basil. You have a couple more leaves here. I always can always add more basil to this. Basil's great and it smells so wonderful, especially when it's fresh. And I freeze it in the winter time. So we are actually going to measure it. I'm gonna put this in here and we need a fourth of a cup. So that's about a fourth of a cup right there. And I just picked up some new, I'd really like to grow next year basil because it's so beautiful. So here we go, we're gonna put this in here. All right, we're gonna take these and, wait a minute, we need this. And we're gonna take these and put these aside. And we're gonna take our chopper blender, right? And what we're going to do is we're gonna add the basil and the other olive oil that we have. And there's, a, actually you have all together for this recipe, you have about half a cup and you have to divide it into quarters. So this is what we're doing. So we're gonna take this, put the basil in here, all right? And then we're gonna add the olive oil and we're gonna make like, it's almost like a spread when you put the goat cheese with it. So let's do this. And then we're gonna chop it. That should be enough. All right, so after you're done with that, then you can take this and put this aside, right? And then just leave your goat cheese out uh, because right when we get ready to assemble everything, and we'll come back to that a little later on, and then we'll use this, the goat cheese, we'll put all of the olive mixture on it, and on top of the bruschettas, and you've got bruschetta. We'll be right back after these important messages. The next thing we're gonna make, actually, is our potato, Polish potato salad, and then our cake, and our soup. All right, we'll be right back after these important messages. We're back on the chef, you and I, and our second dish is going to be the Polish potato salad because you want it to taste cold, at least I do. So we went ahead and actually with our 360 uh, AmeriCraft pans made, I used three potatoes. You can use four if you want to because, um, and you want to scrub them before you use them. And then you, and I cooked them for about 35 minutes. So we're going to take the skins off, right? And I wish I had my bag well. That would be great. But I don't right now. So our producer's going to get it for me so that I can put the peels in there. So some people actually like the peel on it. But I like, you know, and I, and I remember my grandmother, you know, she took the skin off. So it's really unusual. Uh, type of potato salad, but it's so delicious. And you want to cut your potatoes into quarters, uh, into small cubes, and that'll make it easy for you to do. So, so if you can prepare ahead like I do it, it makes things go a lot faster. And uh, actually, I'm going to give you the recipe for this where we've got three to four white potatoes boiled and skinned, and Here's our bagwell that everybody loves. And so anyhow, here we go. We're going to put those in there. Mom is done with this. Then you need two ribs of celery. You need uh, sour apples. So their apples are not real sweet. Uh, there's a reason why. And you have peas, sweet, uh, sweet peas are the small peas that you can get at the grocery store. I, they're canned unless you want to make them yourself. And then you've got um, a half of sweet onion, uh, three hard boiled eggs peeled, and I'm gonna use a half a cup of mayonnaise or more, a half a pound of, and I made some beautiful ham that the producer can hand me because I'm gonna put that in in the end. And um, I actually used uh, one of the hams that you can get that's already done and you just heat it up and you chop the ham up and you use about a half a pound of ham in this. It's really delicious. 
So here we go. We're doing all of this. So we're going to cut them in. I'm going to do this like this. So we're going to cut them like that in half, right? Like that. And then we're going to cut them like that. And then you want to cube them like this. So there they go. I'm going to put those in there. It makes it really simple. And you don't want your potatoes to be too soft. That's really important. So, or they'll be mushy. And you don't want to do that. So, and you want to cut your other vegetables up about the same way or smaller than the potatoes. So these guys are a little slippery, believe me. So here we go. But I remember all the Polish holidays, you know, that we used to go to my grandmother's in Dayton, Ohio. My dad was uh, full uh, Polish and uh, he was first generation. And uh, my brother, my uh, grandfather, he had four brothers come over from Poland. And so about every Sunday we would go up to Dayton, Ohio and my grandmother would have her Polish bread and she'd have chicken or something else or we would go to the Polish club. So I decided I was going through recipes that my favorite recipes were recipes that I remember as a kid. And I thought, you know, this would be kind of cool. So this is why we're doing it today. So the only thing that we're not doing, like I said, is the bruschetta. That's a little bit different. But we're going to make a real simple beet borscht um, that I remember my grandmother made when I was a kid. And I remember my grandfather taking me fishing. So it was kind of cool. So those, are, those were the days, and we mastered the Easter bread, which my wonderful husband, Bill, actually helps me make. He's the person that does the kneading for me because you can't do it with uh, a KitchenAid or something. It has to be done by hand. So here you go. We're doing this, and then I will cut up the apples, and you want, like I said, you want apples that are not sweet, Okay. I think I might even put another, I, I, I made one more, um, actually, potato, and I think maybe I'll do that one more potato with this, besides this one. So you could use, four, you know, they could be bigger potatoes too, so, but I'm actually making four potatoes instead of three. Here we go. So, and, and you really want to refrigerate this for it to all blend together because it's going to taste wonderful. So here we go, and this looks good. You can use red potatoes as well as white potatoes. You know, I mean, you probably, everybody has their own potato salad recipe, right? So I'm gonna take one more potato and out of the 360 pan here, and actually I cooled everything off so I could actually touch that water. So, and um, you know, I had my, and you have three hard boiled eggs to go, in it as well and then you decorate it with one egg on the side so it makes it really simple so we're waiting for that other recipe to finish and then we'll finish that one and then we're going to make our cake after we make the potato salad so you're just assembling all this and cutting on this on the potato salad all right so now we're finishing our last potato here and then we're going to cut up our apples and put them in and our celery and our onion. So that'll make it taste really great. And a lot of people love sweet onions. Those are Vidalia onions. And I don't know about you, but my family loves, that loves Vidalia onions and they're really tasty. So, but I, I like the idea of putting the ham in there. I, I think that gives it a different kind of taste. So here we go. Right, and then, all right, so we're done with this. Let's do our apples next. And I actually put lemon juice on here, on the apples, but you actually want to cut them up just like that, basically, and put them in. And you can do two apples if you want to, if you like apples, but, you know, some people don't especially like apples. I don't know why, but they don't. Um, and th the brown isn't going to hurt this recipe, just to let you know. So here you go. 
I think we're just going to use one apple because we are actually going to put a pickle, a dill pickle in it. How about that one? And um, some people like carrots, but, and, you know, I might put a, one in just to give a, co you know, some color to it. But there's a lot of people that don't like carrots. But I love uh, carrots that are actually sweet carrots. You know, when they're raw, they're sweet. So, there we go. And I think that's enough as far as the apples are concerned. Well, maybe one more, or half of one. How about that? Because, actually, um, it might taste really better. And now this is, these are green apples, so they're not really actually, um, they're not sweet. So you don't want real sweet apples in this. Everything is not kind of sour, but it's really good. So here we go. Now, we're going to add a can of peas, right? And we're going to, um, I, started, I started cutting up my onion ahead. So I didn't have to do, I don't like to cry when I do onions. I don't know if you do or not. But we're going to chop this up. It's about, we'll use the other part of the onion for something else. So, we're going to cut that up and put that in there. And, you know, people love onions, especially these kind of onions, because, and they're not making me cry. How about that? That's wonderful. I don't know why. Oh, now I can smell them. So... You know, you can send your favorite dishes in to us, and if you want them healthier or you want a variation of it, um, or if you're Italian, Polish, whatever descent, ethnic descent you are, send us your recipe because we do everything from raw to vegan to gluten-free, you name it, because everybody has somebody usually in their family now that is, has either an allergy. I have an allergy to garlic, so you're going to add that to it. And that's done. So then you're going to add your dill pickles. Okay. And I have, and I took the seeds out of these. And, you know, I love dill pickles. And we found some that didn't have garlic. So I can have this. This is good. So you want to chop this up because it's just like relish almost. And every... I don't know anybody that doesn't like dill pickles. So, makes it easy to do, right? Put that in there, right? Do another one. Here you go. So, you know, when you prepare this stuff, you can do it ahead of time. Like I said, makes it a lot easier when it comes time to putting everything together. Because you don't want to be in the... You want to be watching the football game or something like that instead of being in the kitchen, in a hot kitchen, right? So, here we go. That's two. So, that's one whole pickle, actually. And then, here, we're going to put the celery in. So, you're just really assembling everything, actually. So, here we go. Two stalks of celery, right? And a lot of people don't like celery, you know, but it's really good for you. So, and it doesn't have a lot of calories in it, which is great for some people that are watching their weight, like me and others, and I love the crunch in celery. It's so delicious to me. So, but this is good. So this recipe will be up on the Chef You and I, and you look, when you go up to the thechefyouandi.com, and you can also find us, not on television, but on YouTube, you can find us everywhere. And I want my scraper, it's a lot easier to work with. So here we go. All right, so I am going to put one little carrot in here. I know we won't see it except whatever. So here we go. All right. So you could do it like this. So you can just see it in there. Or you can get the shredded carrots. I didn't find any today, so we... Just bought some baby carrots.
carrots. And, you know, there's still a lot of fresh, fresh um, vegetables out there from, you know, every city's got a vegetable garden usually. And you should do that. That's, make, you know, buy local because right now the corn's delicious. Uh, absolutely delicious right now. Very sweet corn. Indiana corn is really great. We live near Indiana, so we get Indiana corn. So there you go on that. We're almost done. Now we have our ham. Here's our ham. And see how I did it? I actually just warmed it up a little bit. And this is about half a pound of ham. So I'm just going to cut this up in little tiny pieces. So it just gives it some flavor, right? Really easy. And if you, you know, you can't have ham because, you know, uh, it's not kosher, then use something else. You could use a fish. You could use whatever you wanted. So I like this, though. So I'm going to put that in there. And then we're going to add our uh, eggs. Then we're going to mix it with the mayonnaise. And then we're going to plate it so you can see it. But we're going to put it in the refrigerator, and we'll show you later when it gets cold. How about that? So our toast is done for our baguettes. Now all we're waiting for while we're making this recipe is we're waiting for the grapes to get sm to get wrinkly and the olives. And then we're going to put it. So it's a hot, it's actually a hot bruschetta, which is different than you're probably used to. So anyhow, this has been a really simple, easy process here. And we're almost done. I'll take that off. So here we go. So let's get that in there. That looks good. So this makes, and you can keep this in the refrigerator for three or four days. And I don't know anybody that doesn't like potato salad, right? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the, dre or the eggs to it. And I've already pre-boiled the eggs, right? And I need those. And then I'll use the last one on the decoration. So here we go. Here we go. So we want to actually add the, and oh, we've got chopped dill. Here's our dill right here. And so we've diced the potatoes, diced all the other vegetables, and we're going to mix this all together, right? Now, you can either do it this way, like this. You can mix it all together like this, right? And you want those potatoes to be out there, too, you, because that's what the whole idea is, potato salad, right? So that's pretty well mixed. Now, we're going to add the eggs to it and the dill, but we're also going to add mayonnaise to it. So we're going to chop these up really fine. Right. And I love hard boiled eggs. I really do. They're really, really delicious. So let's put this in there. Right. And, you know, some people just love egg, um, egg potato salad or egg salad. It's more like egg salad than potato salad, but it's delicious. So I know my grandmother, who died a long time ago, would be very proud that I'm doing this today, and my dad would be too if he was still alive. But so I'm trying to do some, you know, family and my, um, my friends, some dishes from the country that my grandparents, my whole side on my dad's side, were all Polish. So let's do this. Let's bring this up here. Now, we're going to mix this all together, and then I'm going to add the dressing to it, right, and salt and pepper, and I'm going to put the dough on top of it. So, hold on. Here we go. And then I'm going to add about, um, about, I would say, half a cup, because I, I can't imagine having a fourth of a cup of mayonnaise in here. So, this is actually... A third of a cup. I'm going to add more because there's a lot here, right? So here we go. 
Alright, so we're going to take that and go like that and just get it all in there, right? So, it's kind of messy right now. Just a minute. And we're going to put this in the refrigerator when we're finished with it, right? And so I want to I want to mix this together and then put the dill on top of it. Right. And then you want to put salt and pepper to taste. And there you have Polish potato salad. Really different, really unique. And I think my relatives are going to be surprised because I've, you know, I've never made it for them. We used to go to my grandmother's and get it, but... They were little kids, a lot of them were little kids while she was, well, I'm the oldest of the family. So let's move this, put this in here, and actually I need salt and pepper. And this is kosher salt. And if you've got a salt problem, then you don't actually want to use a lot of salt. So... We're going to let this go. We're going to put this in the refrigerator and we'll serve it later. And then we'll put the dill on it. We'll put on the dill on it at the very end to show you what it looks like. We'll be right back on The Chef You and I. We're back on The Chef You and I. The, the, the actual toast is done on both sides, right? So what we're going to do is now we're going to put our goat cheese. Remember I said 10.5 ounces of goat cheese. We're going to spread the goat cheese on top of the toast. And then we're going to add our wonderful grapes and olives mixture that we made in the oven. And we're going to put that on top of it. And then what we're going to do is actually... After that's all done, we're going to add this beautiful basil olive oil combination and we're going to drip it over it, okay? So I'm just finishing these, about a tablespoon of, of a goat cheese on top of it. And if you don't like goat cheese, then you know, maybe you can use, I've never used Philadelphia cream cheese, but you could probably try that. That wouldn't hurt. You know, some people don't like goat cheese, but I do. My husband does. Our family does. So... Just try it. What, what you've got to lose? You don't have anything to lose except to try it. And try new things, right? Because, you know, and, and do it with your children, your, um, your children that like to cook or teach them how to cook. And you'd be surprised what they can come up with themselves. So we're, you can make actually 16 with this recipe. I'm only making 10. We'll save it for another day. So here we go. We're almost done. And then, this is the first time I've ever made this recipe, and I'll tell you what, I really am excited about it. So, I've been wanting to do it for a while. So, here we go. i got one more to do. And then, we'll save the rest of that goat cheese for the rest of it for the, later in the week. So, here you go. Now, what we're going to do is assemble it. So, I'm going to move this. Maybe I'll add a little bit of more goat cheese on these two. I was kind of skimpy with it. So, you can always get more goat cheese, right? So, there we go. A little bit more on this one. And we're going to be done. Because the actual olives and stuff will sit on top of it. Okay? So, then what we're going to do is we're going to move this over to the side. And then we're going to assemble these and put them on the plate over there. So, oh, that's still too hot, so I can't touch that. So remember we had thyme, and we had lots of other things on here. So I'm gonna take those gently. My hands are clean. And those are the grapes, right? Put some more olives on there. And then we're gonna pour, I'm gonna pour this over it. All right, and then I'm going to put it on these beautiful plates, right? You could put, if you wanted to dress it a little bit up, you could put some um, uh, chives on top of it or whatever you wanted to do. But, I mean, I can't wait to try this. 
This looks delicious. So it was 40 minutes. It was 40 minutes in the, um, oh, I forgot to put this on. Hold on. I'm going to drizzle this a little bit. That looks good. Put that on there and then go for the next one. So these were big grapes. I mean, really big grapes, but they're seedless. Everything was seedless. And put another one of those olives on there. And that looks good, right? And then pour this over it. Just a little bit. And then here's one. And actually the grapes started getting really these were big grapes, so I wasn't sure. And see how everything got kind of, they look like they're prunes on, not quite prunes already, but you can see how the, how the uh, olives started shrinking too. There you go. Now, one here. One here. One here. And it looks like the olives got kind of distorted or something. I don't know. But I didn't use red olives. I used black olives because they stood, they stand out better, I think, on this recipe. So here you go. And then you want to, I want to actually get a little bit of that, I want to get a little bit of that um, basil to look on here. Okay, that looks cool. So we have four here. And then we'll do four more, and then I'll give the, I'll give the wonderful producer, I'll give him a taste. So that'll be good. So let's do this. And a little bit there. Right. And put one here and one here. And then do the same thing. Because, you know, basil is so good for you. I, I mean, really good for you. And then put one here. Now see how easy that was to make. That wasn't hard. That wasn't hard to make at all. And I just didn't have time for it the last time we did a show. And I was really disappointed because I really wanted to try this. So put that on there. And there. And one more. And then we'll we'll sneak it. A little bit of those in the break. You might want to use smaller, smaller, uh, actually grapes, because these were pretty big. Right? So, there you go. And I think I'm going to do the same thing with a couple of these that I didn't get to do it like that, because you didn't see that. Okay. And maybe this one. Okay. So, guess what? We now have the bruschetta that you're going to really love. It's to it's so different. So, you can see that. We'll take some pictures of it and we'll actually give one of our pro our producer one of these to try. Cuz he always loves to try new things. And see that that grape got squashed. It went like, I don't know. So we need to take a short break and we'll be right back after these messages on the Chef You and I. We're back on the Chef You and I and the potato salad is ready. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper because I like pepper and not a lot of salt, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate it. So I'm going to take that one egg that I made and I'm going to do this. And we will place these like here. Here. right almost like a star right here 
And then I have a couple more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, my hands are clean, don't worry. There we go. Right? Then in the center, I'm going to put the, um, the dill. Oh, shoot. Oh, well, we only need one more. We can eat that one, right? There we go. We can save that right there. It doesn't want to cooperate. Oh, well, here we go. And then in the center of it, we want to put the dill. And so you have the dill already chopped up. So you just put it right in the center. And you have a perfect, beautiful potato salad. And that's it. So it really looks nice. And you want to keep it that way. So you will have a lot of fun making Polish potato salad. And we'll be back after these important messages to make our borscht, which only takes about eight minutes. And we'll be making our cake, our plum Polish cake. We'll be right back. We are back on The Chef, You and I. And actually, I tried to pronounce this wonderful borscht soup, easy Polish beet soup, which is borosh. That means beet. So if you're Polish and you don't like my Polish, call me up and tell me how to say it. But anyhow, we're going to put our four cups of, and this is beef stock, into the 360 pan, right? And then what we're going to do is I'm going to read off all the ingredients first. So you have either four whole beets, about one pound, or two cups of sliced, canned, or jarred beets. Four cups of stock, we used beef. One shallot, chopped fine. They used garlic, but you know I'm allergic to garlic, so we're not using that. Either two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice or one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. One teaspoon of sugar, salt to taste, and black pepper to taste. So in a medium pot, which this is, we're going to bring the beef or vegetable stock to boil. And then we're going to add the cut beets, shallot, lemon juice, sugar, salt, and pepper. And we're going to simmer it for eight minutes. So what we're doing is we're going to put this onto the stove right here. Okay, so we're going to let that boil for a minute, but then we're going to add to it. I have to chop up the shallot, right? And... And you don't, you don't necessarily have to make a whole shallot. You could just cut it up in little tiny pieces like this and add it. So it's like, if you were using garlic, you would be using a teaspoon of garlic, right? But I like shallots because they have a really nice taste to them. And they're really good. And they're good for you. So we'll wait till this boils. Even though I wanted to, sh I even went, though I wanted to have you know, the, the beets cut up. My producer said it's really not important. But we're going to add the vinegar and we're going to add the salt and pepper and the beets in just a moment. But we can add the shallot to it right now. That's not going to hurt. Okay. And because we want to get that in there because then we're going to let it simmer for eight minutes. And I'll just do the whole shallot. Why not? And shallots at this time of year are very plentiful and so are onions and a lot of so fall has really not come totally to the midwest yet we're still in the 80s and 90s it's wild but at least it is cooling off at night to the 50s or 60s and but we really need some rain so i'm hoping this fall we're going to get some rain and also maybe some major snow this year. That would be really nice. I know the kids would love that. So we're, I think we can actually add the beets and the rest of this to our, to our, um, so that is two tablespoons or one tablespoon of, and you don't want to use a lot of vinegar. So you add, actually, this is a little bit more, but there you go. And then you add in your salt there, just that, that's enough salt. And then your pepper. And then this cooks for about eight minutes. 
So let's add our beets. And this is actually two cups of beets. And it'll turn, it'll turn just, you're gonna love it. So we're gonna let that, here I've got that to put in there, okay. And some people like borscht where, you know, they already grind up the, the beets, but I want you to see the beets really, really good for you. And we're gonna turn this down, we're gonna let this get a little hotter and then we're gonna turn it down. With our 360 pans, you don't have to have it on a high heat. So let's let this simmer for about eight minutes. So we're gonna hit the timer. We're gonna put nine minutes on it. Okay, and when that goes, we will have soup to show you. We'll be right back on the Chef You and I. The next thing, the next thing we are making is our cake which we need to get in the oven so that we can serve it. So we'll be right back on The Chef You and I. We are back on The Chef You and I, and we're going to read the ingredients for the Polish plum cake, and they are two and a third cups of all-purpose flour, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, uh, three quarters teaspoon of salt, three quarters cup of sugar, a half a cup of unsalted butter, room temperature, which we've already done, three fourths cup of milk, two large eggs, room temperature, and 10 fresh plums, different varieties that you're gonna put on that are pitted. That's really important, you have to do that. And then for the topping, the uh, what, what we call a streusel topping, one quarter cup of sugar, one quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, three tablespoons of cold unsalted butter cut into pieces, and confectionery sugar. So what we're doing is we're adding the, in a large bowl, we're adding the flour, the baking powder, the salt, and the three-fourths cup of sugar. So here's three-fourths cup of sugar. Here is the flour that I've already measured. Um, I have the baking powder right here, so it is one teaspoon and a quarter. Okay, and then we're going to mix that up together. Just kind of blend it in there, right? And then to that, we're going to actually... Um, add the, the room temperature butter, milk. So here's our milk. Here's a three quarters milk. There is our room temperature um, butter. And we're gonna beat all that together. And then we have two eggs. And there's a room temperature. They don't want really cold eggs in this recipe. Okay, and then our salt. Okay, there we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna beat this for four minutes. So I'm gonna start this and then we're gonna take a little short break and when I come back after, after four minutes, we'll have this done and ready to go. Okay, we'll be right back. We're back on the Chef You and I, and we're pouring the batter after we did it. We actually beat it for four minutes, right? And this is a thick batter. Don't worry. Uh, it's not a real sweet cake, uh, but with the plums it's and, you know, the confectionery sugar for the top, and if you want to put nuts on top to decorate it with confectionery sugar, or you can use a glaze. You can decorate it any way you want to. And so anyhow, we're almost done with this. Okay, we're back and we're spreading the, the actual cake. And like I told you, it's a thick batter. And I sprayed it. I like to use my gourmet duck fat spray on everything. And that's corn huskers duck fat spray and 360 pans. And so anyhow, we're almost done with this, and then we're going to put the plums on top of the batter. 
We're going to push them down just a little bit. Okay. I need that right there. All right. All right. You, don't, you want it to be even, though. Okay. All right. So that looks good. So we're going to put that in there. Put this aside. Now, it says to put the plums. And I'm going to read this to everyone. Put the plums. Pour the batter into the pan. That's what we did. Position the plum halves on top. Cut side up. Okay? So cut side would be this way, right? So we're going to put them in like this. And like this. And like this. This. That's a big plum. Some of our plums are bigger than others. So we're going to put these guys like here and here and here like that. And then put the other ones here. So the juice from the plums actually is going to come into uh, and it'll cover everything, right? So here you go. So these are different kind of plums. I've used red and I've used, we'll take this one. This one isn't very big. We're going to take that one out. We're going to put this one in there. And then I'm going to add one here. And I'm going to add one right here. That looks good. And then maybe a couple here. One here, one here, and one here. Now, we're going to bake this. It's already a 350 degree oven, already heated. So we're going to put this in for um, actually 45 to 50 minutes, it says. And actually, it says uh, cook it for 40 minutes. So we're going to set the timer for 40 minutes. And when we come back, you'll be able to see it. But what we're going to do next is now that our soup's done, we want to show you our soup that we just finished, our borscht soup. We'll be right back. We are back on the Chef You and I, and I have to tell you, this is my favorite part of the whole show, when we get to eat everything that we've made. So the first thing we did was we made the uh, olive grape, wonderful with goat cheese bruschetta, which turned out gorgeous. Then we made the potato salad, which is Polish potato salad, and it's got little chunks of ham in it, which is really good. And then we made the borscht soup, or the beet soup, and then we made the Polish plum cake. And I cannot wait to taste it with some ice cream. I think that sounds good. But so now I did some beautiful kielbasa to serve with the Polish potato salad and the bruschetta and a little tiny bit of the soup. That would be a great Polish meal for you. I'm very excited. Uh, all of our recipes will be up on The Chef You and I. And thank you for joining us today on The Chef You and I. See you very soon. Bon appetit. Thanks for joining us on The Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.